Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Adam here with Indy Farm Life. Big day today for the pond. I'm putting in the beach. So I'm planting on a beach roughly 60 feet wide and kind of see a little stake here and a rock back here and about 20 foot deep out of the water. Carries all the way down just about that log and about 30 or 40 feet out because the run out is pretty gradual and I want to have as much depth covered as I can. Also got a little algae on the pond here. Been treating with some algaecide just last night, so we'll see what it does. Maybe I'll review it later. But if you guys know me by now, you know that moderation is not something I'm into. And so I got a little bit of sand. Just a little bit. You guys think that's gonna be enough? It's just a cool 250,000 pounds of sand. I reckon that'll be enough. What I'm going to do is put two giant tarps down, both out of the water and in the water. Got some uh, 30 by 60, or close to the, that size, from Harbor Freight, 9 mil. And it's easier than the geotextile fabric because it's just of the width of its one sheet as opposed to multiple sheets. Uh, but I'm going to set that down in the water and then put cinder blocks out in the water as kind of a, a ridge so the sand doesn't completely run off to the bottom. That could prove tricky. And I'll put the second sheet here and overlap it, and then it will get sand all on top. Probably get this whole area done first. The sheet in, or the tarp in, put sand in the water, and do the actual beach out of the water at a separate stage. And here's a quick shot, the two tarps I have. Uh, they're big and heavy. So, should do the trick. And with this amount of sand, I did the math on having about eight inches of depth over everything which is going to be overkill because I'm not going to do eight inches of depth in the water because it's ultimately going to run down and create more than that over time so probably be a little thicker up out of the water and less in the water which could mean I might have a foot or so out here but kids will love it all right first step is to get some cinder blocks over here That was the easy part. Put them in the water, that's gonna be tough. Well, obviously I could just push them in the water, but, but putting them in the water in the right spot, I should say. So, quick math, 60 feet, I need 45 of these because they're 16 inches long, and I think I have close to that too. Speaking of center blocks, some of you might wonder, Adam, why do you have well north of 100 center blocks? Well, a couple years ago we found uh, an auction and we bought random things. We bought three skids of center blocks for like 50 bucks. How can you not? So, as expected, this is way more of a process than it needs to be or should be. But I got most of it pinned down on this side. You can still kind of see floating. The method I figured out worked best is take that three inch piece of pipe and lay it down and kind of walk on it and press all the air out of it. It's just so big and cumbersome and you're fighting a lot of air and a lot of space. So what I'm gonna do now is I got this front edge kind of pinned down here. I'm going to take some sand and kind of start putting it in here to keep it down and just slowly walk my way across. But I figured out I think how I'm gonna do this. Uh, some of you might ask, why am I not using the backhoe? Well, the hoe reaches out 14 feet. By the time I set it right here at the stabilizers and reach out, 14 feet is ba maybe just past that brick at best. So, wouldn't be getting me that much. And then I'd also have to pick up all the piles and move them close by so I could pick them up. So, not efficient. What I was doing, parking it, loading it with the tractor, kind of scraping it out with a shovel so that I'm not uh, overloading it take it into the water and that thing actually has enough buoyancy that if it's three quarters of the way full it will float pretty much all the way out and then I can dump it turn around and come back so let me show you that I've definitely 
definitely done more efficient things in my life. All right, I'm gonna do this for an hour or so. Here we are the next morning. Water looks a little bit better. When you first look out here, you think, oh, it looks terrible, all that algae, but actually most of that's still stuff from the sand. Uh, this morning's plan is gonna be get all these cinder blocks in the water, out of my way. Go ahead and build my shelf or my dam, if you wanna call that out there. I was going to use uh, bags of quickcrete and let it harden. Thought it would make for a better seal. Problem is, again, timing's everything. There are already fish in here, and I read that if you let uh, that if you let Quick Creek cure the toxins or whatever it throws off, it's harmful to fish. So safety first. But yeah, get these in the water, and then I'm going to continue spreading this pile in the water with my old trusty wagon here. I'm going to bookend it. Either I'm going to get through that pile or work for about two hours and then hang it up at least for the water side and start putting the beach in up here with the tractor or backhoe. I think I can probably use three of these piles pretty easily up here, maybe two and a half, and I might hold back one pile to come back and fix areas on the beach or cart it into the water another day. I almost forgot to tell you guys, my water shoes bit the dust, so I'm breaking out my best pair of dad shoes. I think these things are circa 2005, maybe 2004, dad shoes before dad shoes were a thing. It's rock and roll. So I've made it about halfway, I would say. Thought I'd at least show you guys quickly this process. I mean, I grab two cinder blocks and I walk into the water. Kind of feel like Jason Voorhees. Takes a minute to get them oriented. The way I'm doing it is when they're out there, I got my wall going obviously that way to stop sand. And I'm trying to get it just at the very back lip of that tarp so that I can step on a little bit and press this down into the clay, which should make a nice barrier long term. I got enough in there that I'm happy with it. With the tarp there, it doesn't need to be that deep. Actually, the sand's really almost there just to protect the tarp so it doesn't get ripped. But depth isn't necessary out here. But up here, where the boys will be playing, definitely need to have it pretty deep because if they're like their dads, they're gonna be digging some serious holes. So I'm gonna take the tractor bucket and clean up this edge a little bit, make it smooth, then get out the second tarp. Also right now, comment below, am I gonna have a lot of extra sand? I think I am. But then again, if I spread this 12 inches thick, maybe not. Now's where it gets fun. Got the tarp stretched out flat as much as I want it to be anyway, or willing to fight it. And I'm gonna start methodically kind of at the end and work my way down. Also, I'm gonna probably put sand here and dump as I go so I'm not driving across the tarp with nothing on it. Also, looking at the overflow over there and realizing we have probably another foot to a foot and a half of water to come back up, the section of the beach out of the water is not gonna be enormous. So I may end up getting another tarp, not quite this big, and setting it back a little bit. So if I have extra sand, that's another use I could use it for.
making pretty good progress. I'd say I'm down to about maybe three piles left. So I've only used half, which is crazy, but there's not that much in the water. I keep pushing these down the hill further and the pond's just drinking them up. Obviously they need to be graded down and raked out, but um, I think I can use more than I anticipated I would. It's making a mess of the pond though. Um, ultimately though, I think I might run out and grab another tarp. I was, I was just thinking as I was on the tractor that it'd be nice to be on the beach and be able to make it to the dock without having to walk through this mess if you want to be barefoot. So probably going to get another tarp and do that or grab one big one and cut it in half and just pull this back another 10 feet or so. Cause I think I'm going to have the sand. This is going to be so awesome. So I got my new tarps or extra tarps, tarp that over to the gangway and back here I added about 12 or 15 feet back as well. You can see the, the break there. So with the water line probably landing somewhere in about here, if we didn't have this extra 15 foot, it'd be a little small. And my sand pile's dwindling pretty quick. Got about two loads left, which I think will make this all look really nice. guys think got some finesse cleanup to do and I kept probably three quarters to maybe a full pile back uh, got to figure out what I'm gonna do for a, a barrier on the outside of it I got a lot of landscape rocks in the woods I might bring over and then I still need to push a lot of that into the water but I'm gonna let rain and gravity help me out on some of this and then I'll come back and clean it up after the rain settles at some and here are things about five days later cleaned up a little bit the water looks quite a bit better, but still need to get a skimmer out there. I might build one of those. It's not 100% finished, but roughed in anyway. I've got a project for another video to clean all this up and make this a lot nicer. You'll see that here shortly. Well, there you go. We've got a beach at our pond. It's going to be nice to be out in the water and not have mud between your toes. I feel like that's a country song. Anyway, hit that subscribe button. Come back and see me sometime, guys. Many more projects on the way. Take care.